Welcome to my introduction to mathematics course on YouTube. This course aims to teach you what you need to know to study mathematics at a university level. In this first video, I will give you an overview of the course contents and the mode of learning. First, let's get an understanding of what mathematics is and why you might want to learn it. Mathematics is the study of structures, properties and relations between objects that can be analyzed by logical reasoning alone without relying on experiments or observations. So that makes it distinct from, for example, physics or the other sciences, which rely on real life observations to formulate their theories. And as you remember from school, I'm sure, the objects of interest in mathematics originally were numbers and the arithmetical laws that relate them and bind them together. The other origin of mathematics is geometry and for a long time geometry and arithmetic were treated rather separately but eventually people realized that geometry can be expressed through numbers and conversely number sets have geometric properties. Today, mathematics is the science of structures that are much more general than numbers and geom geometry, but still reflect back on these two origins of mathematics. And what exactly I mean by that will become clearer to you when you progress through your courses in advanced mathematics. Many people do not like mathematics because it is difficult. Our brains are not naturally wired to engage in the kind of abstract and unforgivingly precise reasoning required for mathematics. But if you make the effort to master mathematics, you will greatly benefit from it personally. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, mathematics sharpens your mind. You will be trained to organize your thoughts and reason clearly, to question assumptions that you make and to carefully investigate your reasoning behind any conclusions you come to. As for practical benefits, you will learn to formulate problems in a way that opens them up to a systematic analysis and also learn the tools to solve these problems, at least in principle. You will become skilled in recognizing patterns and structures, which is valuable in any profession, even those far remote from actual mathematics. And finally, it gives you skills for many everyday problems that you might encounter, for example, understanding statistics, handling your own finances, making sense of scientific claims, measuring property, furniture, distances, or similar things. Overall, a good knowledge of mathematics greatly reduces your dependence on other people's expertise, skills or opinions and therefore gives your life an aspect of freedom. In addition to the intrinsic beauty of this field, this is your motivation to study mathematics. This course is called Introduction to Mathematics, so let's see what you will learn here. I will teach you the basic mathematical concepts that you need to engage in mathematical research such as logic, proofs, set theory and number sets. Throughout you can develop the fundamental skills to work on mathematical problems by solving problems throughout this course. And once you're done with this course and feel confident with the material, you can take on further courses at the university level, such as linear algebra, real analysis, probability theory, and many more. Once this course is complete, I will offer additional courses here on YouTube, so keep your eyes open. You're probably already familiar with most number sets, but here I also want to give a rigorous introduction to these numbers. That means I will show how, how they are defined or constructed from first principles by logical reasoning. This is usually 
not part of an introduction to mathematics as it is quite time consuming. But here on YouTube our time is unlimited so it is a good opportunity to give you this perspective on numbers as well. It is also important to me to give you an appreciation of the historical development of mathematics. So whenever it seems fit, I will give you some background on the history of ideas, the context on, in which our topics were developed and the people who did it. In order to follow this course, there are a few boxes you should tick. As this is not a course that will provide you with cookbook recipes to solve some practical problem you might have at the moment, you should be genuinely interested in mathematics for its own sake. Knowing your school mathematics is certainly helpful and it will make it easier to get an intuition of the materials in this course. And yes, I am going to use Greek letters. They're just too pretty to not use them. So you better learn them along the way if you haven't done so already. And I'm probably also going to use quite a few other fancy alphabets, so be prepared. Let's look closer at the contents of this course. In the first lecture, after this one that is, we will begin with a quick introduction to the language of logic in which mathematics is expressed. We will learn about propositions and truth, so meaning statements that can be either true or false and uh, how to determine their truth value. We learn about logical operations to construct new propositions out of given ones, quantifiers to construct generic propositions that might be true for all elements on the set or just particular elements, and I will introduce the notation for sets which is important for the following. Once we know some logic, in the second lecture we can employ it to verify the truth content of certain statement and the process of doing so is called a proof. And all mathematical knowledge is ultimately obtained by using proofs to derive new statements from older statements that are already known or assumed to be true. And we study certain types of proofs that are commonly used in mathematics, like direct proofs, where we just derive one statement from another by logical reasoning, and contradiction and contraposition, where we can prove a statement by actually looking at the negation of the statement and determining, determining that truth value. And finally, induction, which is a particular type of proof that applies to natural number sets. Next up are sets, which are the most fundamental objects in mathematics. We study their properties and operations to combine different sets. And to study sets, we can use maps, also known as functions, which is probably the more common term you know from school. And these assign an element of one set to each element of another set. And we will also study their properties using the proof techniques we learned before. There's a special type of sets that expresses relations between elements of a set and this type is aptly called relations. In particular we will study, study order relations on sets which can be thought of as giving a hierarchical structure to a set. And we study equivalence relations, which generalize the notion of equality and allow us to create causal representations for the elements of a given set by constructing so-called quotient sets. Finally, we will turn to the study of the common number sets, n, z, q, r, and c, so the natural numbers, which are just the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Then going to the integer numbers, which take the natural numbers and include their negatives. Going from there to the rational numbers, which include fractions like 1 over 2, 2 over 3, minus 5 over 17, and the likes. Then going on to the full number line of real numbers and 
if we add the mysterious imaginary units to the real numbers, we arrive at the complex numbers. We will give rigorous definition for these numbers, beginning with the natural numbers, and construct each of the following sets from the previous one. What is the best way to follow this course? Well, of course you have to do whatever works best for you, but here's my suggestion. I present the content in a classical lecture style and aim to give a complete and deep coverage of the content. If you don't like that style, well then, tough luck, it's the only style we have here. I think three hours of lectures is a reasonable amount of money material to be digested on a weekly basis. As always, with mathematics, the lectures build on one another, so if you skip ahead, you will have gaps in your knowledge and lose track of what's going on. And if the individual lectures are too long, just take a break and resume later. That is one of the luxuries of online learning. I will number the lectures and use timestamps, which should make it easier for you to get back to a lecture later on. To learn mathematics, you should first watch someone else do it. In this case, that would be me in the videos here. Then second, imitate what they do. In this case, you can do so by using the small problems in the lectures and the homework exercises, more on that later. And three, at some point, do your own creative work, which is rather something for when you finished a few mathematics courses, but some of the homework problems here will already give you an opportunity for some creativity. And speaking of problems, <clears throat> there will be some small practice pro problems throughout the lectures. These are not too difficult and meant to familiarize you with the material you just learned. For these practice problems, I recommend you pause the video and take a few minutes to solve them. It is perfectly fine to rewind the video to recall the materials or take a look at notes you might have taken or a supporting textbook. And once you're done, compare your own solution honestly with the solution that I suggest in the lecture. Then in addition, there are some more involved homework problems that I will give you every now and then, and each will be covering roughly one week worth of material. The difficulty of these homework problems will vary, so do not be dismayed if you have trouble solving some of them. It is absolutely normal if you can't solve all of these problems on your first try. The downside of video lectures is that they do not provide good channels for feedback or discussion. At this point I suggest you use the video's comments section in place of a forum. Feel free to ask any questions on the content or also to point out mistakes that I might have made in these lectures. And please remember to be polite. If you have friends who want to do this course as well, be sure to discuss the material and the homework with them. It's hard to exaggerate the benefits of collaboration on one's ability to solve problems. That's the end of this introductory video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel, as this will make it much easier for me to produce videos in the long run.